Okay, so apologies for having to restart every day. Okay, so this one I think I'll just go through is more of revision. Huh? Alright, so for today what we're gonna look at, okay, we're gonna look at at least the first 10 pages of the lecture notes. Okay, and uh, before we begin, I will like to show you a quick video so that you can understand what is the information this thing for the video was actually shared with you all yesterday. The whole video actually is four minutes plus. Alright, and I mentioned we don't have uh, enough time in lecture to actually show you the full video. So what I've done is I capture the uh, important parts of the video. Alright. Let's say you have ten dollars. In the 90s, with this ten dollar note, you could probably buy five plates of chicken rice or a haircut. Fast forward to today, the same ten dollars can buy you only three plates of chicken rice or half a haircut. This phenomenon, the sustained increase in the prices of goods and services in the economy, is known as inflation. Over time, the prices of goods and services do not always go up. Prices can come down as well. For instance, the price of handphones has fallen steadily over the years, and today you can purchase one with superior features at a lower price compared to 10 years ago. Okay, so you have uh, solved quite quickly uh, what exactly is inflation. Alright, so when we talk about inflation, I think it's important for you to know right, the definition of inflation. So inflation is not just about the rise in our price level or just one item. Okay, when we talk about inflation, right, do bear in mind the definition. Okay, inflation is seen as a situation where we have a sustained increase in your general price level. Okay, sustained increase in general price level of economy over time. So the word sustained here. Alright, we need to emphasize to you the importance of this word sustain. Because if it's only for just one time period, alright, it might not qualify as what we call it inflation. Alright, so sustain here suggests that uh, the increase in the general price level must be persistent or continuous. Alright, across a period of time. Okay, just want to mention uh, when we talk about inflation, it's not just a price. In Price level of just one item. Do not the definition here states that it's increasing your general price level. Alright, so it is talking about uh, the increase in prices of few goods and services. Okay, and when we talk about your measuring of your inflation, how do we go about measuring inflation? I think you have been introduced to this term known as your CPI, your consumer price index. Earlier, when we were talking about your know, key economic indicators, right? This was, uh, I believe, uh, some time last, I think, was it last year? No, early this year, early this year. All right. So, what exactly is this CPI? So, I, some of you might not recall what a CPI is. So, what a CPI is, okay, it's basically a measure that examines the weighted average of prices of a basket of goods and services. Commonly purchased by your household. Okay, commonly purchased by the household in a specific time period. Alright. Uh, later on, I, I believe some of you have a question in mind, okay, what constitutes the uh, consumer price index, at least in Singapore's context? I have a slide on that, which I will touch on later. Alright, but before we go any further, I think it's important, okay. As highlighted in this particular section of our notes, okay, this part of, about uh, something that we want you to think of. Okay, if you look at this particular question here, so this is a past year A level question, a very recent past year A level question, 2017. All right, you can see what is presented to you, okay, a set of data in relation to your CPI. Okay, across 2011 to 2015. And the question here that is being uh, asked is what has happened to the rate of inflation? All right, and the price level in China between 2011 and 2015. 
Okay, so when we ask this question, what happened to the rate of inflation? All right, and then the uh, price level of China. So based on what you see, what has happened to your general price level? Has it been decreasing or has it been increasing? This is your consumer price index, right? All right, and you can see all these values here, they are actually positive. So if these values are positive, okay, what this suggests to us is that your general price level are actually increasing. All right, and the rate at which is increasing by is actually at a slower rate. So what I want to introduce to you, okay, or highlight to you, please do not confuse these two concepts. Okay, because what we see here is what we see as a fall in inflation rate. What does this indicate to us about price level that your GPL is actually seeing a slower increase? All right, and this is what we term as this inflation. All right, sometimes you might see this term this inflation. All right, and this term this inflation it does not mean that general price level is actually increasing. Okay, your general price level are still increasing, but at a slower rate. Alright, what about this phenomenon here? Negative inflation rate and a fall in GPL. What is this phenomenon known as? Okay, this phenomenon is known as your deflation. Okay, which we will touch on later on. Okay, why we highlight this at the start is because over the years we have realized that this is one very key common mistake. Students tend to make. So I think it's very important for us to establish at the start so that we have a common understanding towards uh, the difference between uh, this inflation and your deflation. Okay, so highlight one time this inflation is when there's a fall in the inflation rate. All right, when there's a fall in the inflation rate, what this suggests to us about general price level is that your general price level is increasing but at a slower rate. Right. On the other hand, when we are looking about a deflation, a deflation is actually what we term as a negative inflation. All right, and uh, what this means is that there is actually a fall in your general price level. All right. Okay, so I hope you understand this because the understanding of this will help you to answer this question and help to uh, get you the. This is usually a two-part question. This should be a two-part question. All right, and these are the type of questions that you want to score if you want to do well. All right. So if you choose not to do well, then you don't decide to pick on anything. Like. All right. Okay. So moving forward. All right. Okay. I want to look at the next section on inflation and the value of money. Okay. So what kind of relation is there between inflation and the value of money? All right. Is it a direct relationship? Or is it a inverse relationship? All right. So when we have inflation, what this means is that your general price level is increasing. So when your price level, when your price, your general price level is increasing, okay, what this suggests to us about the value of your money is that with the same amount of money at this point in time, you are actually able to buy less of what you could have bought previously. If you recall in the video, it mentioned about how $10 in the past could get you 5 plates of chicken rice. But in today's context, you might only get 3 plates of chicken rice. Okay, so this suggests to us that your purchasing power of the same amount of money that you have has actually fallen. So this means that, okay, your value of money, alright, will also fall up because of that. Okay, so with the same basket, of goods and services. In, in this case, you can see between the two years, 2016, 2017. All right. Inflation rate. How do I calculate inflation rate? Later, there's a formula. All right. But between these two years, you can see that inflation rate is 5%. All right. So when there's inflation rate with the same amount of money, all right, you are, as a result, able to buy less of your goods and services. So that's why the value of your money Okay, vis a vis your GPL, you have an inverse relationship. 
Okay, so that's what is uh, highlighted in this particular section, section 1.2 of the lecture notes. Alright, so the key ideas are highlighted for you. So, like I explained earlier, when there's inflation, general price levels are increasing. Alright, with the same amount of money, you are now, as a result, able to buy lesser than what you could have bought before. Okay. So when that happens, the purchasing power of your money has fallen. Right? And this task suggests to us that the internal value of your money has increased as well. So this is the key idea you need to take note of. Okay, so just now you introduced to this term known as uh, deflation. This phenomenon called deflation. So what is the relationship between deflation and the value of money? Deflation and the value of money. Okay, so when there's deflation, it's just the opposite, right? When there's deflation, your general price levels are falling. Okay, and with the same amount of money, you are now able to buy more goods and services than before. So as a result, the internal value of money here increases. Alright, so you just have to swap it the other way around. Okay? Alright, moving forward, okay, we are going to introduce to you the various types of uh, inflation. But before we do that, okay, as established earlier, how we go about measuring inflation? Okay, we look at the changes in our consumer price index. Alright, and if you recall, what the consumer price index is, is essentially, alright, it measures the change in the price of the basket of goods and services that are commonly purchased by households in a specific time period. Alright, so as I mentioned to you, I will show you what is in the basket of goods and services uh, in Singapore's context today. Okay, but do remember when we talk about CPI, CPI basically measures the price changes of this basket of goods and services across a specific period of time. And weights are actually given, weights are actually given to different segments Right, of your goods and services in order to represent uh, the proportion of the money that is spent by the average household in the economy. Okay? So degrees of inflation, okay, the various degrees of inflation is of course dependent on the inflation rate. Up. So before you can go about understanding the various degrees of inflation, you need to know how to calculate the inflation rate. Alright, and inflation rate calculation, okay, the formula is as such. So it's CPIT, okay, the consumer price index of uh, time period T minus the CPIT minus 1, the year before the period T, over CPIT minus 1 times 100%. Okay, so this uh, formula is uh, useful when you're asked to calculate inflation rate. Okay, hey, so just now I mentioned to you, okay, uh, I'm going to show you Singapore's uh, CPI okay, and uh, various uh, components. Alright, so in Singapore, okay, you can see for the general household, okay, what is included in our CPI, our basket of goods and services are the various items. Uh, and you can see housing and utilities, food, as well as transport. Okay, these are the top three expenditure groups of the average household in Singapore. Okay, there are others as well. Okay, but these three are the top three. Okay, and the percentage basically they are the weights that's allocated. So the heavier the weight, it would suggest to us that the household spent proportionately much more on this. Uh, segment of expenditure. Okay? Alright, and uh, to give you more context about inflation in Singapore, okay, so this is a very recent article, uh, dated 9 of February. Okay, so this is uh, sharing with us about the cost of living in Singapore. 
So why is it important for us to actually calculate inflation? All right. So knowing inflation rate, you can use it okay to actually look at your cost of living in a particular country. All right. And some important points to highlight to you. Okay. Cost of living. All right. There's a slow overall inflation in Singapore. So in Singapore, what we're experiencing. General price level is increasing, but at a slower rate. All right, and some pressure points. So these are actually this article is actually highlighting the three main areas in which uh, cost of living in Singapore is actually uh, caused by is causing an increase in. All right, and it's largely due to your increase in your education costs, healthcare costs, as well as your food costs. Alright. Okay. Uh, in 2018, we were looking at headline inflation. So I will uh, introduce two terms to you: headline inflation and core inflation. All right. The idea of headline inflation is basically the inflation that you see, the inflation rate that you generally get. So inflation rate in 2018 was 0.4 percent. All right, inflation rate in 2018 was 0.4%. The year before, which means 2017, our inflation rate was 0.6%. Okay, what are what the years prior to that? Okay, 2015-2016, we actually had two consecutive years of negative inflation. So negative inflation suggests to us that general price level has been decreasing. All right. So this is basically your headline inflation or the inflation rate that you generally see. All right, I want to introduce this term known as core inflation. All right, if you look at this part here. So some economies, we generally will not look at inflation rate for the country. We, we should propose that core, we should focus on core inflation because we think that core inflation here is a better gauge of your underlying living cost. Why is that so? It's because core inflation actually excludes your accommodation and your private road transport costs. Because at least in Singapore's context, these two components are heavily influenced by government policies. So what are some government policies that will affect your accommodation and private road transport costs? Okay, Policies for private road transport, your COE. Okay, when your, your COE fluctuates, all right, in recent times, the COE has sort of come down, but COE was as high as about $70,000, 70, $70,000 to $80,000. All right, in recent times, I think it's sort of uh, come down to about twenty dollars to $30,000. Okay, so this such drastic changes in your COE prices can heavily influence your private road transport costs. Because when you buy a new car, okay, this is about uh, forty to fifty thousand dollar difference. Okay, it's gonna uh, cost quite a huge change, you know, price level you pay. Uh, accommodation costs, okay, you also have a cooling measure that your government is actually undertaking. So all this can also affect your accommodation costs. So that's why in Singapore, okay, what we prefer to look at instead of your headline inflation rate. It's actually this inflation rate known as your core inflation rate. Okay, because it strips out uh, the two components, which are your accommodation and your private road transport costs. So if you strip these two areas out, okay, you can see actually core inflation rate in 2018 was 1.7%. And in 2017, it was 1.5%. So this is just to give you a bit uh, of a greater understanding about inflation rate in Singapore. Okay, because I know many of you are very curious to know okay, what about Singapore or Singapore. Okay, so this is information I hope is useful for you. And if you need more information about not just inflation rate, about how it rate and so on and so forth, you are always welcome to visit the Department of Statistics website. Because uh, I think that 
Okay, you go to six step, you can find a whole list of uh, information there. So just now, as I mentioned, uh, the three primary parts in Singapore, what has actually led to the increase in cost of living okay, in recent times? First one was your education cost. Second, your food cost. And then third was your healthcare cost. So to give you a bit more of understanding, all right, education cost. So down here, we have your education cost, okay, your tuition fees, all right, for both polytechnics as well as uh, your university side. All right, and you can see the, 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 the bar is in the light green. It's representing the year of 2013. And the one that says dark green is the price that you have paid in 2018. All right, so you can see across both bodies as well as in universities, okay, your fees are actually rising. And these fees that you see here, all right, they are after the subsidies that's given by the government. Okay, you know there's a tuition grant. Okay, and this is the amount that you pay after your tuition grant. Alright? So by the time you all go into university, this year they are also increasing. So it seems to be almost on a yearly basis that the universities are increasing their tuition fees. Okay? So with this increase across time, this is five years. And you can see, of course, the year NUS. This actually rose the most up. All right. Okay, and the rest of the other universities, you can see quite substantial increase in your fees as well. So such changes in your education costs, okay, pushes up the cost of living in Singapore. All right. When we talk about your food prices, again, some comparison, some figures for you: 2013 versus 2018. All right, you can see that uh, across time there's some changes, some increase in your prices of your goods and services. I think uh, quite substantial one is this one, infinite of All right, you can see that it takes $44.30, it is about $56.06. All right, the rest are quite uh, minute. All right. And of course, healthcare costs. Healthcare costs because of uh, increased demand for healthcare, with an aging population. Our right, healthcare costs is going to rise even further. All right, so these are different areas that uh, Singapore is experiencing an increase in cost. In, right, and then this helps to explain why inflation rate in Singapore. Uh, the, the inflation rate that we see in Singapore, those inflation rates that I shared with you earlier. Alright, so coming back to the various degrees of inflation, alright, of course, at the uh, at one end we have what we term as mild inflation, right? Moderate rate of inflation. This type of inflation are uh, the acceptable rate. I know uh, there's some figures given. Okay. These rates are actually what we term as acceptable because when we have mild inflation, what this suggests to us about the economy is that your economy is showing signs of growth. Okay, if you don't believe when you draw your ADS diagram, when your AD increase, all right, your output increases, your general price level will increase, especially when you are close to full and blah blah blah. All right. So when we have mild inflation, what this, what this suggests to us is that there is still growth in the economy because we rather have this than to have no, uh, no inflation at all. all right? There's another type of uh, inflation known as creeping inflation, and this is inflation that proceeds for a long period of time at a moderate and fairly steady pace. So this is also what we term as still acceptable right now. Because this usually comes about with pay increase and your actual growth. So say that before. Because this is spread across a long period of time. Alright? What we want to avoid or what we don't want to see is of course the extreme end. Okay? And this is what we term as hyperinflation. Hyperinflation. For history students, you have probably seen this term before. 
Uh, because this usually happens during war, uh, war time, right? Where your government prints lots and lots of money. Okay, so inflation that proceeds at a very high rate. Okay, why is it that we want to avoid such hyperinflation? It's because hyperinflation causes uncertainty in business planning. Okay, in making decisions. And all this worsens your economic situation. Alright, to give you greater clarity and understanding about what hyperinflation is, I will show you two videos later on. Alright. Of course, uh, we also want to introduce this term to you, stagflation. So stagflation here, alright, how this term stagflation comes about, okay, is stagnation plus inflation now. Okay, so stagflation here, okay, is when your level of national income output remains constant. So this part here is to tie in with the part about stagnant growth. Stagnant growth. Okay, so you have stagnant growth, but your general price level is still increasing. Okay, so what is, uh, what is the concern about this is that as your economy reaches full employment level, your AED operating on a classical range, and this will just keep on rising. Okay, your general price level will just keep on rising. Okay, so unless your LRAS actually increase, if not, this will be uh, the situation that you see okay, for a prolonged period of time. And again, this will worsen your economic situation. All right. Okay, so now I will show you the first video on hyperinflation to give you a bit more understanding about why hyperinflation is something that we want to avoid. Like. Okay, so you have seen uh, in general what hyperinflation is. Alright, and there are a few examples of uh, countries that were quoted. Alright, I think uh, what the, the value that jumps the most to you is about 231 million percent. Alright, that's in Zimbabwe. Alright, so I will show you an example of what it means for that particular country and the economy. So this video will touch on that, right? Inflation continues to skyrocket. The central statistics of the Malaria put the inflation rate at 11.2 million percent, the highest in the world. 
experts believe it could be much higher. But just what does an 11.2 million percent rate of inflation mean? In Harare, they call it the hour economy, price of goods changed by the hour. It has been a gradual increase in price of goods. In November last year, when the governor of the central bank slashed off three zeros from the currency, a loaf of bread, and then a basic commodities cost a few hundreds of dollars. By December, we needed hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy bread. By January, a loaf of bread and things like tomatoes were costing millions. By April, we lost billions. Okay, so I think you will hear a lot and share with you about the economy in um, Zimbabwe. Alright, so how so much was the bank of tomatoes? I think you saw that it was about 30 million. Alright, for apples, now it's 6 million. Alright, they call it the hour economy, which hour you are, hour economy. So prices actually change by the hour. So what kind of uh, inconvenience will it cost? All right, so these are things that we will examine later on, the effects of uh, high inflation. All right, when, you, when your prices changes by the hour, you are a consumer, you don't know when to consume. All right, you might go back on consumption thinking that in the next hour, the price could increase or it could decrease. Okay, businesses as well, they cannot plan for the future because your prices are unstable. You don't know whether it will increase or decrease in the next time period. So all these are issues that we will look at deeper okay, in subsequent lecture. But I thought I'd give you uh, an idea of it, uh, okay, at least through these two videos. Alright? Okay, so uh, inflation, other than the fact that we can uh, classify them in the various degrees, Okay, inflation here can also be what we term as anticipated or unanticipated. Alright, so if we can actually anticipate the inflation, right, this helps businesses and individuals because they are better able to predict the inflation rate. And since they are actually able to predict the inflation rate, they will take the necessary steps. They to protect themselves against the negative effects of inflation. So just now remember, the negative, one of the negative effects of your inflation here is the uh, falling value of your money. The falling value of your money. Okay? So if inflation is anticipated, workers, they anticipate that oh, there's going to be inflation in the next time period. What they will do is that they will then go and ask for higher wages. Okay, because they will want to protect their own real income. Okay, and then same as okay, if you save your money in a bank, all right, when you have inflation, all right, this inflation is going to lower the purchasing power of your savings. So what you will do, you will buy a higher dollar interest rate to protect the value of your savings. Okay, so if it's anticipated, okay, uh, you can take preemptive measures. Okay, but it is unanticipated. The let's say inflation rates vary from year to year. Economic agents become uh, unable to accurately predict the rate of inflation. All right, and they may make errors in their forecasts. So such situation might lead to an adverse effect on the economy. And we'll examine these uh, effects, I said in subsequent lecture. All right, because today's lecture, we are going to focus on what is inflation in general, the different degrees of inflation and then the types and causes of inflation. Okay, so with this, I'm going to give you a two minute, quick two minute bio break. Now it's time of day, I'm going to resume at 9 10. Alright, we'll be moving on to the next segment, which is your types and causes of inflation.
Okay, you are two minutes is up. Can you please put aside all your mobile phones? Can I have your attention back, everyone? Okay, nine, ten, and we need to move on. Okay, so. So earlier we were looking at inflation in general. All right, we examined uh, the various degree of your inflation. All right, we got a better understanding about the experience of inflation at least in Singapore's context. Okay, at least over the past few years. Okay, we also saw about uh, we also saw inflation. So hyperinflation, the effects of hyperinflation, and of course the uh, anticipated unanticipated inflation. Right, so right now we are moving on uh, deeper to the topic of inflation. We're going to look at the various types and causes of inflation. So it is important this section, this section of the lecture notes, okay? Because for you to understand what inflation is and whether inflation is good or bad, okay, it's important for us to understand the different types and causes of inflation. All right, and there are two main types of inflation that economy could experience. So the first type of inflation is what we term as demand pull inflation. All right, the second one is what we call cost push inflation. All right. So as the term suggests, demand pull inflation. What causes demand pull inflation? Okay, so demand pull inflation is caused by a continual increase in your AD. All right. When your economy is assumed to be close to or at, at least at full employment. Okay, such inflation usually associated with a booming economy. Alright, and the main cause, alright, as the term suggests, is caused by increased AD, so it must be caused by the components of your AD. So what causes an increase in AD? Increase in your C, I, G, or X minus X. Okay, remember earlier the definition of inflation. All right, inflation is sustained increase in general price level. So later on, I'll be sharing with you your demand pool inflation, how you draw your diagram to show this demand pool inflation. Take note on that particular diagram, you need to draw at least three A demands. And I'll explain why later on. All right. So this is demand pool inflation. Cost push inflation. By the term suggests is due to increase in cost of production. Alright, and do note the term persistent increase in your cost of production. So when there's an increase in cost of production, how will this affect the economy? Okay, I need to re-emphasize re this to you. When you are doing macro contract, please make sure you are using at least your ADAS analysis in your answers. Okay, so when there's an increase in cost of production, the impact of this would be on your AS. So you need to state what happens to your AS. Alright, so when there's an increase in cost of production, what changes here is your decrease in your SRAS. Alright, and when you draw a decrease in your SRAS, you can see your GPR will increase like, at the end of the day. So main causes, okay, what causes increase in cost of production? Increase in your labor cost or increase in the cost of your raw materials. Okay, so what I have basically is all from your lecture notes. Uh. I don't have anything extra. Alright, so if I do have, I will give you time to copy, uh. no worries. So what I have here is the same as what we have earlier. And remember, I said that on a diagram, I need to draw at least three AD lines. Okay, important things to note. When do we have demand pool inflation? Demand pool inflation occurs when we assume, all right, this assumption must be very clearly stated, right? when we assume that we are close to or at full employment. Okay, because if this assumption does not hold, if your AD increase, but AD increases where? Let's say AD increases at the horizontal portion of your AS. Okay? Do we do we have your demand pool inflation here? The answer is no. So that why that, that, that is why it is important that you state this very clearly. That you state this very clearly when you talk about demand pool 
inflation. Okay. The other thing that I want to address is why we have these three demands. Okay. Remember the definition of demand pool. Oh, sorry, not just demand. Remember the definition of inflation. If inflation here is the sustained increase in general price level or the persistent increase in general price level. If you only draw two A lines, is it sustained or is it persistent? Huh? The idea of sustained or persistent is not actually clearly exhibited if you just draw two A lines. So that's why for you to draw that is sustained, you need at least three A lines. Alright? Okay, so this is how you demonstrate or this is how you draw okay if you're asked to draw your demand pool inflation diagram cost push inflation okay cost push inflation when there's a decrease in your SRAS okay your AS term shift to the left or whatever of you like to say it is shift upwards all right and what this does you can see the GPL increases from T1 to P2 so that is the uh, Cost push inflation that we see. Okay, and the main causes that we examined earlier increase in labor cost or your cost of raw materials. Okay, moving forward. Okay, so take note. Alright, when you draw your cost push inflation, your AD should also cut AS like, at the intermediate range for clearer. Illustration of your changes in GPL, this part here, P1 to P2. Okay? Alright, now we will look at causes of your cost push inflation. So remember earlier, cost push inflation, what could be the causes of your cost push inflation? We mentioned your labor costs. Okay? So when we have increase in wages, Without a corresponding increase in labor productivity. Okay, this would cause what we call wage cost push inflation. Okay, and this would happen in countries with powerful trade unions uh, with strong bargaining power. Okay, because the idea in the cost is that you should be paid based on your productivity. Uh. Alright, but if your wages increase, but you don't see a corresponding increase in your labor productivity. Okay, then what we see, what we see here would then be your wage cost push inflation. Alright. Just now we also saw uh, one of the cause of your cost push inflation is your increase in cost of your raw material. So what could cause, uh, what are some of your raw materials? Uh, I think that's more important. Okay, so raw materials are things such as oil, coal, or natural gas. All right, and uh, when there's increases in the prices of these raw materials, this would actually bring your cost of production up. All right, and previous examples, we have seen shortages of oil. Okay causing sharp increases in your cost of production, resulting in cost push inflation. All right, when we talk about raw material, it's not just limited to oil, coal, or natural gas. There are other types of raw material as well, depending on the context. All right? But generally, these are the few okay, that we usually see. All right. Okay, another type of cost push inflation is what we term as import price push inflation. Okay, so this usually happens to economies that import their raw material. So countries that generally have to import their raw materials, they tend to uh, be lacking in terms of natural resources. All right. So if that was the case. Okay, when there's increase in the import prices of your raw material and your semi-finished goods, okay, this could bring about what we term as import price push inflation. All right, and one country which is especially susceptible to such imported price push inflation is of course Singapore. All right, because Singapore being small, 
we have limited natural resources. We are, as a result of it, very susceptible to your import price push inflation because most of our raw materials we actually import from overseas. And this is actually one of the reasons why okay, your MAS, your Central Bank of Singapore, all right, why we actually adopt this approach of a modest and gradual appreciation of our sink dollar. Okay, uh, there's another type of cost push inflation which is termed as your profit push inflation. So this is usually the case where your firms try to take advantage of their market power. Alright, and uh, what they do is that they try to make more profits by pushing up prices. Okay, so when they push up prices, all right, what will happen is that your, because, okay, why is it that they want to push up prices? Because they want to maintain or at least have a certain amount of profits that they have in mind. Okay, and this usually only happens when uh, the firm has some significant market power. So the greater the market power, the greater the firm's ability to raise your prices. This is what we term as a profit push inflation. Okay, so we have talked about both demand pull and cost push inflation. So take note of this part here. Okay, we highlighted about how demand pull and cost push inflation can actually occur together. All right. So what do I mean by that? So the interaction between your demand pull and cost push inflation okay, will result in what we term as a wage price spiral. All right. So it can start off very easily. Okay. When let's say there's an increase in aggregate demand, which leads to an increase in your GDP of the general price level. Okay, so this is the onset of what we term as demand pool inflation. So because of this, okay, your labor union may then start to demand for higher wages. When they demand for higher wages, this would actually as a result increase the cost of production for your firm. Okay, this increase in cost of production will further increase your GPR. Remember your cost push inflation? Because firms are then as a result forced to raise your prices of your goods and services due to rising COP. Alright. And higher wages lead to higher income, which leads to higher consumption. So this higher consumption will increase your AD. So this will go on in a spiral. That's why it's termed as a wage price spiral. Okay. Alright, so just to summarize what you have learned today, we have seen what inflation is, what causes inflation. Uh, I have only about two minutes or so. I wanted for you all to try something from Kabut, but I will do it in the next lesson. Okay, so next lecture's homework. Okay, what I need you all to do, reread. Because we are going in deeper. Alright, into understanding what inflation is as well as the policies to tackle your different types of inflation. Okay, so next lecture on Monday, please pre-read at least pages 11 to 25 because we will cover that, that range of pages, all right? Okay, if not, uh, in construct, can you please return back all the attendance holders and uh, you all can be dismissed. Thank you.